Hello everybody, this is Bo Dinian, and I come to you with my first question, which was submitted by a professor of Temple University. This question tells us, to devise a synthesis of aspartame using any derivative of aspartic acid we choose, and using phenylalanine. We must make uh, the phenylalanine derivatives ourselves using any reagents that we wish. And I have given the structure of aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and aspartame, uh, to make it more clear exactly what it is they're asking for us to do. So, this is the strategy I have devised. This is the general way this reaction is going to look. That little arrow is very, uh, <laughs> very misleading because there are a lot of midway reagents that we must go through before we can get aspartame. We can't just throw these two reagents together and expect them to spontaneously come into that confirmation. Our first step here is making the derivative of aspartic acid. My chosen derivative is an aspartic acid with a Bach protecting group on the amine and a DCC activating group on the top carboxylic acid. There is also a phenyl ester on the bottom carboxylic acid because that is going to prevent a later reagent exposure from turning that carboxylic acid group into a different kind of group, which I'll have to save that surprise for you later to figure out exactly what reagents we're going to be using. DCC is a carboxylic acid activator. It makes the carboxylic acid group open to nucleophilic attack, because normally it would not be reactive to nucleophilic attack. The Bach group is an amine protecting group. It prevents the amine here from acting as a nucleophile. It's important that we prevent the aspartic acid derivative from acting as a nucleophile, because in the aspartame we see the aspartic acid derivative group right here on the left side. Its amine must not have anything attached to it. While the phenylalanine, which I can tell is over here by the uh, blatantly obvious phenyl ring, is going to be the nucleophile. How do we know that? Because the nitrogen that is attached to the phenylalanine group is now attached to the carbonyl of the aspartic acid derivative. Because of that, we know what our nucleophile is and we know what our electrophile has to be. For this reason, we are preventing our aspartic acid from being the nucleophile by putting that protecting group on the amine. Next step of synthesis. Next, we want to turn the carboxylic acid group on the phenylalanine into a methyl ester, because aspartame, if you can remember the structure, had a methyl ester on the phenylalanine's carboxylic acid position. This is a pretty simple synthesis. All we are going to do is put phenylalanine into methanol. I'm talking about dissolving it in a very large abundance of it, because normally the carboxylic acid is vastly favored uh, thermodynamically over the ester. But due to Le Chatelier's, Le Chatelier's principle, not French, <laughs> we can shift that equilibrium, because it does happen in equilibrium, over to the ester side by putting a vast abundance of the methanol the hydroxide, which turns into water upon catalytic um, acid, will dissolve in the alcohol and leave the alcohol to be absorbed by the reagent. Then, the methylated phenylalanine is introduced to our aspartic acid derivative. The result is a nucleophilic attack on the activated acid group. You see here the amine on the phenylalanine attacks the DCC-activated carbonyl uh, carboxylic acid. When it does this, the DCC leaves as a DCC derivative whose uh, name kind of escapes me right now. But you can easily Google it to figure out what that is. It is a waste product, and that's why I didn't bother to look it up, because, you know, we're not going to be saving it and wrapping it up and giving it to anybody as a gift. We don't want to have this in our diet soda. And our resulting um, compound here is going to be a dual-protected aspartame. You see it has the whole right side as an aspartame already, but the left side still has protecting groups that we have to get out of there. And I'm going to show you how to remove those protecting groups now. Finally, we must remove our various protecting groups to get our final product. Bach. The Bach group, which you see here in the upper left hand corner, may be removed by acid, but be sure to exclude water because if you put water into this particular compound with acid, again, this right here will be replaced and turned back into a carboxylic acid. That's the reason why we use the methanol solvent in the first place to methylate it. 
and this uh, theme is going to come back up later in this uh, video. The acid of choice here is trifluoroacetic acid. We use this because it does not have water in it, but it very much does donate protons. So it will get rid of the bar group for us. The phenyl ester can be removed by gentle hydrogenation. That is the phenyl over here at the bottom. Being careful not to reduce other groups on the molecule. So we use catalyzed hydrogenation under gentle conditions so that we don't take the carbonyls and the rest of this compound, because there's a whole bunch of them, and turn them into alcohol groups. So with a little bit of patience and gentle conditions, we can turn our phenyl ester protected aspartame into just regular old run of the mill aspartame. And this is the end of the reaction. This is all that you need to do to make this work. But I'm going to tack on my own little information here because I think there's something you should know before you go out to the store and say, hey, I want to buy a bunch of diet soda because now I know how to make aspartame, so therefore I know it's safe. That's actually a very, very false comment. Aspartame, you see, is an unstable molecule. I will show you why. Why do we not like aspartame? Aspartame contains a methyl ester in its structure. This is the guy that we had to put phenylalanine and methanol to make. Methyl esters, when put into acidic conditions in the presence of water, turn the methyl ester into a carboxylic acid, which again is thermodynamically favored. But the problem is this releases methanol. And methanol is closely related to uh, ethanol, which is a simple drinking alcohol. So it absorbs into our body super fast, and this is a bad thing. We don't want methanol in our bodies because the same enzymes that convert alcohol into acetaldehyde in our system, so it can be flushed out in the urine, will convert methanol into formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is embalming fluid. It causes blindness along with many other effects. A lot of people that drink wine on a daily basis end up going blind into old age, not because they watched their uh, computer screen too bright, but because formaldehyde did damage over time to their... Uh, ocular nerves. So methanol is a very bad, bad thing to have in your body, and it gets released into your body when you ingest aspartame. It doesn't get released in very large concentrations, but you don't want to have any of this in your body because it does damage cumulatively, kind of like smoking cigarettes. The tar doesn't all get into your lungs in one day, but eventually it builds up, the damage is done, and then you're essentially screwed. So, the official stance of Bodine is just use sugar. You can just go to the gym and work it off, but you can't work your eyes back. And this is the answer to our questions for the day. So, I am very happy that I got input from my viewers, and I look forward to more of your questions in the future. Have a nice day.